promotes the development of the strong value systems to guide the learner, the communities, and nations. Having been involved in educational agendas in Africa and somehow internationally for many years, I have learned that we need education that empowers learners and young people with knowledge, with skills, but with very strong value systems. If education does not help to bridge the huge gap between rich and poor, then I would have to question its end value and argue that it would not be sustainable. How sustainable can education if it does not help us learn to protect our environment, our planet, and live in peace with nature rather than being at war with it? I want to see education that empowers young people to question to develop a game minds and skill sets, to make choices, to find meaningful employment, and to play constructive roles in their families, their communities, and their nations. I want to see education that en enables young people to value other human beings instead of fearing them. Education that encourages them to understand the importance of equality and equity and helps them to recognize the importance of collective responsibility and action. I want to see education that produces young people who will not tolerate their peers living in abject poverty in the midst of plenty. Young people who will, not, who will be outraged by inequality and they will be impatient to bring about change. As educators, administrators, politicians, and activists, individually and collectively, those of us attending this conference have the opportunity to rethink and to promote education that enables us to rebuild a stronger, more sustainable, more accountable world. As an organization, UNESCO, because of its mandate and mission, has both the opportunity and the responsibility to help us to fulfill in this regard. We have the knowledge in will, the technology and the skills available to turn this situation around. We know how to prevent discrimination against girls at school. We know what we need to do to provide education for all primary age children. We have set targets, goals, parameters, and develop the countless campaigns and policies. Yet, financial resources still lag behind these commitments and policies. And that points to a failure of political will, nationally and internationally. With political will, we can achieve our goal even with very limited resources. Let me use the example of uh, Malawi or Bangladesh very poor countries, but which have managed to make significant progress in areas of gender parity. It's a question of political will, it's a question of commitment. The past few months have made it clear that the failure to meet the past pledges has not been because of lack of money. For example, globally, we have enough military hardware in existence to destroy the world several times over. Yet military expenditure continues to grow. In the last quarter of 2008, global nations poured billions and billions of dollars into maintaining the banking system. And at a very short notice, UNESCO estimates that only seven billion dollars would be needed to assist low-income countries to meet the key educational goals set internationally. We are talking of the Millennium Development Goals. Yet, resources pledged over decades are still not made available. At the time of economic uncertainty, it is even more important that we increase our efforts to deliver these resources. And that implies shifting our own adult value
value systems. We must take much greater efforts to make our governments and international bodies understand that our children need more books, not more guns in their hands. We need to ensure that uh, our national and international budgets reflect that understanding. We need also to ensure that uh, those resources are spent developing educational opportunities that promote knowledge, skills, values, among others of equality, of equity, of respect and acceptance for everyone. UNESCO has a mandate that includes support the countries in development of education, including curriculum reform and the teacher training. We need to ensure that curricula develop both the minds and characters of our children. And in these kind of times in which we are, it is time to question whether what we have is adequate. And that the teacher training produce teachers that can deliver in all three strands of valuable education, which I mentioned as knowledge, skills, and values, but particularly in this 21st century, to allow our children to meet and to respond to the challenges of modern times. I would like to believe that in my home, we promote values such as caring, equity, honesty, integrity, and promoting the well-being of the collective, not just the individual. I want to see those values reflected in the education of not just my grandchildren, but of children across the world, particularly in those areas where the decision making is so important. Much of the knowledge we have gathered about HIV, AIDS, malaria, TB, and other health emergencies show us that education is not a luxury. It's not simply a right. It is a potential life-saving measure. We have the opportunity to promote that life-saving measure. Let us make sure we don't miss the opportunity again and we use it properly. I hope that when we meet in 2015, it is because we can look our children in the eye and at ourselves in our mirrors, knowing that we have at last moved from rhetoric to significant action and fulfilled our promises of assets for all, good quality for all, sustainable education to our children and to each other. I thank you.